Sweet baby Jesus and the orphans. Look at this. We are live from London. Welcome to the Block Party, powered by Block Asset. I'm Adam Catterall. Pleasure as always to be in your company. My right-hand man is here, Nick P. And this feels a little bit weird that I'm not in my basement. You're not in your pool house, uh, bringing the Block Party to the masses around the world. Wherever you are around the world, welcome. If this is the first time uh, you've ever been with us, um, where the bloody hell have you been? We've been here for 11 shows. This is now show number 12. And we've got an action-packed one lined up for you tonight as we build up towards UFC London. We want you to become a member of the community. Of course, we encourage you every single week to join the Discord. Uh, that link for the Discord will be featured in the uh, notifications for this particular stream. So make sure you click on that and become a member. And of course, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. This feels a bit weird, doesn't it? It's weird because I've never done block party with trousers on before. Usually I'm at home, no one can see. It's the full it. So I usually have a desk there, mm. plus, speedos on. Plus, as well as that, there's actually other people in this building watching what we're yeah, actually doing. So exactly. we can get away yeah, with God knows weird. all sorts of stuff whilst we're just doing this, <laughs> looking into a Zoom or whatever it may be. But it's nice to have loads of people around us mm. and enjoying it. Members of the community in the in the building as well, just to enjoy uh, a little bit of a night and a little bit of a, a sing-song maybe later on for a bit of karaoke. Hello, what okay. do you reckon, lad? Always, we'll mate, you know it. me. We'll get stuck you know into me. it. Listen, we've got lots coming up. Loads of top guests uh, coming to join us on the show. Obviously, loads of conversation points. Uh, from a mad week here in London for UFC London. Uh, and of course, loads of uh, community news as well. If this is the first time, genuinely, that you've come to obviously join us on this show, this is a place where on a week-by-week -week basis, we talk about sports, we talk about crypto, and we talk about NFT. Normally, we do this on a Tuesday night. This is normally a Tuesday night show at 7 o'clock. But because we had an extra special show lined up for you this week, we thought we'd just switch it up a little bit. So it's not not your schedule out too much, but it's enabled us to, one, come out on location, spend some time with some people, and get some top-quality guests on the show. UFC London this weekend, headlined by Tom Aspinall, taking on Curtis Blades, who's on the show later on. That's pretty big, isn't it? To get the main the event to come and join us on the show. <laughs> you can tell uh, he's a heavyweight, he's not cotton weight. Of course, but also... Paddy the Baddy, Molly McCann in town, Paul Craig in town, more Mark I have. Uh, it's an action-packed stat card at the weekend. British MMA on fire. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think a lot of the viewers will have watched the March event, which is here in London. Usually when we get one event a year, it was the first event we'd had in three years because of the pandemic. And it was absolutely off the chain. Sensational night. So many massive performances. Bonuses for pretty much everybody on the card. And literally Dana White backstage bumps into Tom Aspinall, who'd been in his first ever main event here in the UK. And he said, Dana, don't drag me to America. Don't take me anywhere else, mate. Bring me back here to London and let's do it again. And Dana and the UFC aren't daft, man. They know when they get lightning in a bottle, you've got to play that thing out and keep those fans happy. And here we are four months later. And mm. I tell you what, I know you're pessimistic about it. About what? Skeptical about it. About what? I'm telling you now, Saturday is going to be even better than March. Even better. Unbelievable, wasn't it? Um, listen, one thing that I have noticed in this room, right? And this, this is unusual because I don't think the, uh, the, the block party block asset community have, have sampled this from us as of yet. Our shoe game is absolutely elite, right? <laughs> elite. And I'm looking around this room and I'm thinking, geez, man, there's some money knocking about in here, isn't there? Because there's some people that have rocked up in some serious heat on their feet. In particular, did you see uh, Gurum Kutta the lads' his feet they, earlier on, mate? They were. They are straight out the... Nice pair of Jordans. They, they are straight, straight out the box. Fresh box, mate. Fresh yeah. box. He's got that on. So he's obviously representing well. He knows the score and he'll be joining us on the show a little bit later on. Um, a little bit of community news, right? Because as you know, on a week-by-week -week basis, we encourage you to, uh, to join our, uh, our, our Blaze. Well, can we call it a Blaze party now? Yeah? Absolutely. We can yeah. call it that. Yeah. So each week, we encourage you to burn block in order to gain advantages with our competitions and various things that we run. Um, well, tonight, we are launching something very, very different because normally what happens at this point, we'll flash up a QR code on the screen. You go to the QR code. That's a unique wallet for you to go and burn your block and various prizes and competitions that we run throughout the course of that enables you to join uh, that, uh, that competition. Um, but the lads here at Block Asset, they want to make it even easier for you. That's right. They've done a bit of grafting. I'll tell you something. There's some techno well, going on here, mate. They've, they've been typing into the internet, right? And they've created a brand spanking new platform for you. Um, so in around about five minutes from now, this is going to go live for the first time. And you can go to blaze.blockasset.co. You can go onto that platform, and that is where you can now burn your block. And you can choose what you're burning your block for. Amazing. Because we've got three phenomenal opportunities uh, for community members who are burning block with us uh, over the next 24 hours. Um,
prize one, and we'll call it prize because it is a prize. Prize at number one. Check this out. This is absolutely sensational. You get the opportunity to go training with the Smesh Brothers. That's right. <laughs> and it's not like a cheap gimmick Smesh Brothers. It's the real ones. It's yeah. Hamza Chimaev. It is Dan and Till. Um, good luck training with yeah. them two lunatics. Don't get in a car with them. We've all seen them doing donuts in Las Vegas. Yeah. Don't do anything mental like that. Go in the gym, train if you're brave enough. I don't know whether I'd be brave enough. I've got to be honest with you. I've no, seen no, no, their no, no. S&C sessions. No, listen, both of them are lunatics, right? Yeah. So it's going to be a proper uh, training session. You're going to get suplexed. You might come out with a few broken <laughs> bones or something like that. But it's a wonderful opportunity. It's something to tell the grandkids, isn't it? You know yeah. what I mean? Go and burn your block, and therefore you can enter uh, that. There's only limited, obviously, numbers, as you will know, in order to join that. So we will flash that up on the screen throughout the course of this evening as of when uh, that is sold out. Also, two other opportunities there that you just saw flash up on the screen. Um, you, you know that the boys here at uh, Block Asset have teamed up with Yelly here and they're looking fly, right? Now, so, some of them trackies... Half the people in this room are decked out on them. Well, it's money can't buy stuff, right? So we're going to give you an opportunity to burn some block in order to get your hands on one of those uh, unique uh, uh, track suits. And then, of course, the final one, we're in London. For UFC, like right week, isn't it? That's what we're in. That's what we're here for. So we're going to give you an opportunity to get your hands on some tickets as well. So it's up to you. Three fantastic opportunities there on block dot, sorry, blaze dot block asset dot co. Go on there, have a little bit of a nosy in. You can burn your block however you choose uh, and get stuck in. If you're brave enough to go for the Smash Brothers training session for play to you, I personally would probably go for the tickets for <laughs> UFC London because I'm a soft ass. But that would be wicked if you uh, could get involved with that. And uh, who knows, we'll uh, see you in Stockholm sometime soon. And I've no doubt that Ethan will have his camera and he'll film it and he'll embarrass you uh, once that training session Correct. is gone. All right, so go and get stuck in a little bit of something. Could be famous for getting beat up by a UFC fighter. Absolutely. Remember that happened to you? You got a little bit of internet fame didn't. when Francis Ngannou battered you? That didn't happen. It was embarrassing. That didn't happen, right? What happened? Francis Ngannou shot on him. The guy with no wrestling in the heavyweight division shot on him, took him down. Do you know why? About, in do about 16 Do you know seven? why he shot? Because he couldn't live with me on the feet. Yeah, there. right. I was lighting okay, him up, yeah, yeah. and then he decided yeah, yeah. to wrestle. He All knew right. that my wrestling game was oh, weak. Yeah. We missed that on the video, did we? I was lighting him up there. <laughs> Yeah. I landed one significant strike you, on him. You couldn't light him up with a lamp. Yeah, fair enough. Anyway, uh, you get your opportunity with the, with the Smash Brothers. Let's get stuck into UFC London. What fight are you looking forward to the most this weekend? <sighs> what fight? Oh, my God. What, what portion of the card? I think the party's going to start early. Uh, I think little Mo Mokhiev is something very special. Mm. I think to, it's top and tailed, actually, with two very special British athletes. You've got Mo Mokhiev at the bottom, Tom Aspinall at the top. Both of them have got absolute title ambitions in the heavyweight and flyweight division of the UFC. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go with little Mo to set the party off and then Tom to, to rubber stamp it at the end. Fair play. What about you? Uh, Paul Craig defending shots with his oh, face and then uh, doing somebody with a triangle. Pulling like. guard. Yeah. Something, Flying triangle. Something daft like that. Yeah. Have you noticed, right, we're in a bar doing this show. And no one's talking. And everybody's well behaved. I don't know. It's weird. So nice and chill. There's some seedy music going on in the background now, like some saxophone going off, <laughs> like some dodgy porn show or something. Yeah. And right. everybody's but, just staring at us. Maybe I, we're the manumission attraction. Maybe I, they're expecting something a little yeah, bit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it ain't happening. All right. It's it ain't happening. happening. That's not how this, this thing goes down. It does feel a little bit weird. Just enjoy yourselves. Enjoy yeah, your man. drink. Have a chat amongst yourselves. Please. No problem. We'll probably come over with a microphone and a, and a camera to come and have a little bit of a chat with you at some time soon. It's been, it's been a weird week, actually, hasn't it? Because obviously we're all catering and getting stuck into UFC London and getting dead excited about UFC London. But throughout the course of this week, every single day, yeah. there has been brand spanking new news when it comes to matchmaking and certain fights being made. Every single time I go to bed, I think, right, that's it. That's me for the week, sweet as. You wake yeah. up in the morning, there's a new fight that has been made. And UFC 280, Fire. before we get to Hamzat's fight with, uh, with Mr. Diaz, UFC 280 in Abu Dhabi in October, He's, he's absolutely on paper looking like the card of the year. Yeah, it just looks absolutely insane. You know, two title fights on there. You've got some stellar fights on the undercard. Listen, the one that jumps off the page, of course, is Peter Yan taking on the Sugar Show, Sean O'Malley. But that's mad because it's jumping. not the main event. It's not a title fight. It's not even it's the three-rounder. It's not even the core main event. But you're telling me that's the, that's the fight that everybody's excited about. I think I don't know whether everyone's excited about it so much, but you, there's two ways that goes. You know, Sean O'Malley is a massive blossoming star in the UFC. We all know it. But let's be honest, he's going from being around rank 11, 12 to taking on the number one contender in the division. That's who Yan is. I know he's just lost the belt to Aljo. But that is a massive step up in class. Mm. You know, what? a lot of fighters would beg for that. Don't get me wrong. Most fighters in most divisions, you know, a couple of our guests tonight would jump at that opportunity, of course. But to give him that opportunity now, without beating anybody else in the top 10, 
In fact, these four people in the top ten have fallen short. Sean O'Malley. So for that, for, to get that opportunity is massive for him. Can't wait for him. Oh, Can't that's crazy. Listen, we're going to get stuck into that card a little bit more uh, as this night progresses, but I think it's only fair that we get stuck into some guests. I'm just looking at the clock. Can the boys give me a thumbs up? Has that website gone live? Has Blaze gone live? Have we got the thumbs up on it? It says 10 past on my watch, so that's what time you told me. Yep. Yeah? Sweet. We are there you go. The, for everybody that is watching this on the, on the live stream that is going to be burning block, the Blaze website is now absolutely live. Blaze.blockasset.co. Go there. Three opportunities, obviously, to get involved in various competitions. Completely up to you. Go and burn your block. And best of luck uh, entering those uh, particular uh, competitions. Now, uh, before we bring our first guest on, and we'll have a little bit of a chat uh, with Arnold Allen in a minute, uh, I want to kind of take the tone down a touch, because everybody's going to enjoy themselves, going to have a nice drink and a little yep. bit of a, a bit of what have you. There is a serious aspect to the things that we do here at Block Asset. You may remember episode one, we spoke to the current unified heavyweight champion of the world in the world of boxing, Alexander Usyk. Everybody knows that Alexander Usyk is going through a bit of a situation at the moment. He's, as he's preparing for the rematch with Anthony Joshua, his country is in a, a real state of crisis uh, with what is going on there. And Alexander Usyk came on, he explained the various things, and we announced at that time that we would be doing an NFT collection with Alexander Usyk, and the proceeds of that NFT collection would go to his charity, his foundation, in order to help people in Ukraine. Here's a little video from Alexander explaining a little more. Я понял, что самолеты в Украину уже не полетят, и, и мы поехали в аэропорт, поменяли билеты, долетели до Польши. В Польше нас встретил наш друг, товарищ, довез до границы украинской. Там мы сели на машину, доехали до одного из украинских городов, а из того города мы уже добрались до Киева. Бокс это спорт, бокс это ремесло, а война это выживание. То, что я не так много увидел, слава Богу, но то, что я видел и то, что я знаю от моих близких, некоторые мои знакомые, друзья пропали, мы не знаем, где они находятся сейчас. Многие мои близкие потеряли дома, своих знакомых, своих близких. На самом деле это очень страшно, то, что сейчас происходит. Каждый день молюсь о том, чтобы это поскорее закончилось. Бокс по сравнению с этим, то, что происходит, бокс по сравнению с войной, это младенец, это маленький ребенок. Война это страшная вещь которую не пожелаешь даже врагу. Отключаться от этих мыслей для того, чтобы хорошенько подготовиться, прославить в очередной раз Господа Бога моего Иисуса Христа и, и мою страну. So there you go. In the build-up to uh, the rematch between Alexander Usyk and Anthony Joshua, we'll be dropping uh, Alexander Usyk's uh, unique NFT collection, 2,000 unique pieces. You saw a clip of the art there. You know that those Incredible. blacks have been involved. He's they absolutely smashed it amazing. once again. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, and the best thing about it, not only do you get a unique piece of art, but you're also doing some good for the world as well. All proceeds from that NFT collection will be going to Alexander Usyk's foundation, of which, uh, obviously... He will be helping his uh, his people in Ukraine. So there you go. Keep across all the socials. 
uh, and all the accounts that we have here at Borkassi, and we'll keep you up to date uh, with the exact date time of that drop. You can uh, you can reserve your pieces now. That Joker one looks ridiculous. <laughs> Is that the one you clocked? I like the one at the end where you could just see that London 2012 gold medal. I yeah, thought, oh, oh, yes. It's a looks bit of good. me, that. Looks good. Uh, now, as you know, we're on location. We're in London for UFC London. Um, back in March, one young man put in a bit of a display at the original UFC London. Um, but sadly, hurt himself in the proceeds of doing some bad things to another human being. <laughs> and therefore, isn't featured on the card this weekend. But very kindly, uh, has given up a little bit of a time. Uh, to come and join us is, is, of course, UFC featherweight, the one, the only, Arnold Allen. How are you, buddy? You good? Yeah, well, good yourself. You very good? well, mate. Very well indeed. That uh, tracksuit looks very well on you. Fits nice, though. Does it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not too overweight. Muscle fit, mate. Muscle I've been fit. in the corner eating chocolate cheesecakes and all sorts of things, <laughs> so <laughs> it fits good. <laughs> yes. First and foremost, how is the injury? Because you did damage your hand in the uh, in the fight yeah. down, uh, in March. Yeah, it was just a common case of like fragile hands meeting a hard head. So, <laughs> yeah, nah, it's gonna it's gonna be alright. It's uh, I'll fight this year. Basically, I will fight this year. Everyone keeps saying the one fight a year. I will fight this year. So, yeah, it's getting there. I'm gonna be good. Listen, we've been talking about. 280, mm -hmm. Abu Dhabi, October. Does that match the schedule, mate? Listen, every man's dog seems to be on that card at the moment. Pal. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that, that could work. That, I mean, that should work. I was, initially, I was aiming for September, but yeah, yeah that ain't happening. So yeah, for, yeah, October probably works. Loads of people. Um, There's a card in Sweden, actually, in November, I think. Is it? November, December, Stockholm. Oh, I didn't know that. That's been rumoured around, yeah. So oh, yeah, that could be cool. Yeah. Always like Sweden. Yeah. Nice. Uh, lots of people obviously excited about this weekend, right? And I've said there's not a cat in else chance that this car at the weekend can live up to what we experienced in March, mm. right? Now, before you answer that and shoot me down, <laughs> let's talk about that card in March. Because mm -hmm. as experiences go, fighting in front of that crowd, fighting, fighting on that night, mm. and delivering the performance that you delivered on that night against Dan Hooker, yeah. that's got to be right up there with the best things so far in your professional career. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty good. It was... Uh... It, it was pretty good. It wasn't the solid. <laughs> it wasn't the strategy, but uh, you know, it was the result we wanted and this all the things we worked for and all that. It'd been nice to come out with two good hands and get on, you know, push the momentum and whatnot. But uh, yeah, the crowd were amazing. The whole event, top to bottom, was unreal. Just everything went perfectly, really. So, do you, do you think the atmosphere and the crowd actually played to the way that you ended up fighting? I think so. No, no, no. So no, not at all. So what happened? Um, so Dan, Dan threw a punch and it went in my eye and I couldn't see where he was. So there was like three of him for a minute. So I thought, if I just keep hitting him, like, you know, <laughs> just keep hitting the one if in I middle. just keep throwing, I'll hit him. <laughs> and where he's like long and rangy, I didn't want to back up and give him space. So I just thought, just charge forward. So yeah, I, I got hit in the eye and just literally everything was blurry. So I figured if I just keep swinging, I'll hit something. And uh, <laughs> so I just kept trying to just hit him. Yeah. Love that it. Was the problem. So you do a 12 week camp for these things. You go over everything with your yeah. coach. This is our game plan. This is this. But then a thumb in the eye, and suddenly it's like, right, yeah. you know what? Throw all that out the window. Just, the just throw punches. <laughs> just try <laughs> and hit the one in the middle. That's literally it. So yeah. And then uh, you see the fight, and like uh, I took a little break after it, and it was just like, I could start seeing him a bit better, and I'm thinking, oh, I'll hurt him there. Like, just do it again. <laughs> so I said, like, do it again, do it again. But yeah, man, it was all right. It was all good. Not the strategy. Mate, you, you saw play these victories down. I know. We're talking Honestly about God. Dan Hooker, who's obviously fought at various weights. He's mm. been ranked very highly in both weights. Yeah, we're all right. You know what I mean? It turned up, done a bit, gone home. Yeah. It was all part of the game. Well, not the game plan, but the plan. You know? what, what was the reaction being like from fans, the UFC themselves, to a victory of that magnitude? Yeah. Uh, I think people start to like maybe realize that I'm actually all right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that bad. You know, I'm, I'm quite good. You know, you know, Never mind the previous nine victories yeah. or whatever it was, but you know, maybe this one. That, but we talked about that prior to the fight, though. Back in March, we said, you know, this guy is coming from the weight division above. Mm. He's highly ranked in the weight division above. You know, he's picked you because you're on this incredible run. Yeah. Or, you know, the, the match was made, sorry, because of this incredible run that you're on. He's trying to steal your thunder. Yeah. But it was your chance to get someone that's been a headliner and that's the key for you. Yeah. Take his shine away. And I think you've done that now and now you're in a position where there's conversations around at the moment about a potential interim title fight mm. and your name is on the table. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I feel like I just need another win against against one of them sort of top five boys to sort of like, you know, solidify myself amongst them. 
And uh, I don't feel like there's any question that after that. But yeah, I just need to beat one of those guys, and I don't see why not. But without a win over one of those boys, then I'm still sort of a what if, you know? Yeah, the, the chat, of course, is about Volkanovski, the champion, mm, you yeah. know, with that stellar performance yeah, against Max real. Holloway, which you know, let's get your take on that before the same yeah, thing. To be honest, I, I thought Holloway was going to win. After the second fight, I thought Holloway won the second fight. Yeah. I thought he was going to pick up where he left off and sort of keep it going there. Just, he looked on another level, didn't he, Volkanovski? Just too quick, too smart. Just one step ahead every time. Two steps ahead, to be honest. Yeah. No, he was. He was He was absolutely unbelievable. But similar to yourself, he's come out of that with an injury. Yeah. So he's going to be out at least six months. <laughs> yeah. He's also kind of angling for a shot at the lightweight belt. Yeah. Yes. Which yeah. could delay it a further six months. So, you know, there's been a conversation at the moment about, yeah, Rodriguez. He's just put in a stellar performance of his own. Yeah. Yeah, Rodriguez being matched up for the interim title bout. When you look at those rankings, there's only really... Two names that make sense, yeah, yeah. It depends what they wanted. It like, uh, I hear a lot of talk about Emmett pushing for that. Like, Dana was saying he was interested in Emmett versus the IO, but I don't know. I don't, I don't usually get like a lot of people back me saying that I should be the one, but I'm getting mentioned in a lot of things and people are pushing my name forward. And I mean, maybe it makes me feel like I do deserve something, but I don't know. I still feel like I need a win over one of those guys above or anything, so yeah. Hmm. Where does that leave you then? You know, Calvin Cater maybe, or in fact, zombie. That... You were much stuck with zombie at one point, weren't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, but uh, I don't know because you know how the like, fans are with these things. Like he's ranked below me now. So then, yeah. I, I mentioned zombie like a year ago. I, I think I was going to get zombie for the uh, Dan Hooker fight, and then he obviously got the title call up. Yeah, it was sort of that was what I was expecting, and then people were like, "Oh, you only want him because he's on a skid," and like. Can't win. Oh, like, you can't win. Now, people said it about Dan Hooker. Oh, you only won because you come down away or he's on a skit. I'm like, okay. Well, I'm only fighting who I'm told to fight. So, yeah. Who do you want? Come on, man. Let's get Gobby. This is this exactly. Is, we'll, we'll do it on here for you. I called, I called out Cater in the last one, didn't I? After um, Dan. I would have, like, that is the ideal matchup. I feel like he won the last fight. But again, it's that same thing. People are like, oh, well, he lost now. Like, you need someone winning. So, I, I don't know. I don't know. Anyone, anyone above me, to be honest, anyone above me is is they're all they're all tough fights. They're all the five best guys in the world, so they're all tough fights. Any of them? Yeah, yeah I've seen I've seen a bit of noise from Yar Rodriguez. He's kind of the guy in the pole position, you know. He's yeah. he's the most logical title contender, so therefore he's the first name on the on the sheet, if you like, if there is an interim belt brought in. And he's kind of said, "Well, I I don't really want to fight for the interim belt. I want yeah. Volkanovski. I want my title opportunity." which kind of closes the door a little bit on you and Josh Emmett. Yeah. So the obvious solution is you fight Josh Emmett. Yeah, I, yeah, we've been booked to fight a few times. So, I mean, oh, really? I've done, uh, I was supposed to fight him in North Carolina and he got injured in sparring like the week out. And I fought Nick Lentz that one. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, he got injured in that one. I think we signed to fight again and he wanted to fight someone ranked above or something and it, it didn't happen. So yeah, yeah but no, no reason why not. No reason why not. Like, we've done a camp for each other. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. so many great matchups in your division man so there many is. great matchups all the names that were mentioned in there like I'm I, I was as you were talking I was just having a little bit of a daydream going Josh Emmett and you that would be really nice you know yeah. what I mean obviously he's on a great run at the moment we know what his strengths are we yeah. know what he does it would just be a fantastic matchup Cater would be a fantastic matchup <laughs> listen if you can get to the shot with Volkanovski that in itself is a fantastic matchup because yeah. we've, we've said on this show that we think that a performance like that warrants number one pound for pound. I mean, it should be an ever-moving situation. Don't get me wrong. Usman's still in that conversation. Izzy's still in that conversation. Yeah. Charles Oliveira is still in that conversation. But the performance that he put in that night... Yeah. Yeah. No one's just put him there. Yeah. No one, nobody, nobody else in that conversation has done that to another person in the conversation. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, and right. Max was in the GOAT conversation along... Uh, the pound for pound conversation, sorry. Alongside all old guys. So mm. when Volkanovski does that to Max Holloway, mm. for me, that puts him above Kamano Usman. Yeah. He's the best guy on the planet. Yeah, can't disagree. Can't which is, disagree. which is, which must be cool for you because the best guy in the sport is in, the way, is in your tar is in your sights. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And it's, it's inspiring, isn't it? Like the, you see his work ethic. The guy's got a... He gets better every outing. He gets... He looks like on another level. He brings in the best guys to fix all the solutions. Like when he fought uh, Ortega, yeah. he's drilling with uh, Craig Jones. Like he's drilling with the best guys he can to get the best look he can. Someone like coming up and trying to be in that position, like you see, it, like yep, that's what I have to do. You know, I have to get the best work, the best guys, work harder than everyone else in the room. Yeah, and yeah, it's possible. That's where you'll get. You know, mm. 
the, the, obviously, people watching the stream, what we like to do, we like to showcase a little bit more of your personality and let people know a little bit more about you from as the person that's outside of the octagon. Are yeah. you still traveling like 45 hours a day to training <laughs> camp in, in, in Birmingham? Yeah, yeah, I've been trying not to renegade now. And then. So I've, I've been like recently, I started sort of easing back into sparring, like playful sparring. I still have to wear like the old. Uh, can you, can you just explain thing. what playful sparring is? Just a bit lighter. I just use my right. I just use my left hand. It, it's basically <laughs> like me trying not to hurt my hands Fair or enough. trying not to get hurt by the guy I'm sparring with. <laughs> That's literally the sparring. But uh, yeah, I did a, I did a light round the other week with Leon. Funny enough, I said to him, I was like, I've got to take it easy. My hands are still a bit fragile. He's like, Yeah, we'll go nice and light. <laughs> oh, oh. I'm just like, oh, all right, okay. I, was like, I don't feel ready for that yet, mate. <laughs> yeah, but now nah, he's he's looking sharp, looking really sharp for his fight with uh, Ozma. Yeah, really... for, but for people that don't know, you do a couple of hours on the motorway there. Yeah, was... you don't stay over. No, no, straight no. back. Three hours there, three hours back. I hit pads on the way home when I get back. Then a forty-five minute drive home. Yeah, and then uh, I go to bed and I wake up at five and uh... shower in the service station. Because no, there is they, no shower at Renegade. They've got a shower there no now. Way they have, yes, yes. They're pulling yeah. in there, man. I had two so showers there in the last week. So oh, was, my goodness. It's a winner. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Two showers in the last week. There's yeah, seven yeah. days in the two week. Seven. So what are you doing the other <laughs> five days in the week? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Saving water. Save the planet. Yeah, exactly, yeah. 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 The session on here. Is it a hot shower? Uh, there was heat. There, there was, was heat. heat. There was oh, some right, heat. Okay. It was tepid. There was some heat. <laughs> no, it was it's, a, it's, it's a fantastic gym and a fantastic yeah. mat there's some yeah. serious kid, kids I mean obviously Jai's down here this yeah, weekend yeah. competing yeah. but you just mentioned Leon there and yeah. he's next in line for an opportunity to become world champion from from these shores anyway he's got a very tough task ahead of him yeah. uh, against Kamaru but listen you're, you're a man on the mat you've seen him you've seen what he's doing yeah I, I, I believe in him you know after like as a southpaw and a guy coming up, I was always watching his fights to sort of take things from. And that was kind of one of the reasons why I wanted to go train at Renegade. Just to learn from someone like that, just to learn from him and sort of see what he does. And uh, just seeing the way he's, even, not, not even like he's training, just the way he is as a person. Like, he'll be a good champion, you know? Like, he's a, a good bloke. I think he'll do well. But when I first started going up there, he was, you know, pairing me with all the good guys, like, giving me the good rounds. He was even, like, the first fire and he was imitating Dan Hooker and it's like, I'm just some random guy that can't. Well, I'm just a random guy that come up to the gym to spar with you, and you're helping me out. So he didn't need to do that. Yeah, so he's a good bloke. He's got all the tools. He's solid striking. His wrestling's underrated. I think he's got the tools to do the job, you know. So hopefully he gets it done. When, when you get to that level, you know, you're talking about they're the two best welterweights on the planet. Yeah. You know, I think everyone appreciates that now. Everybody else, you know, seems to have had their shot at Kamaru. Leon's way overdue his shot at Kamaru. Mm. We've seen it in boxing recently with upsets like this. And I think, you know, anyone that's writing Leon off is way off the pace because yeah. anything can happen on a given night with these two guys. I truly believe that. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I, think, I think Leon's got the tools to, to take him out, to be honest. So he's striking sharp, but he's slick. He's got power. He's good. He's, he can do the job. You know? It's a very technical fight. Think, yeah, it? yeah, he is. It is and it, it's very close. Could go either way. I listen up and it's three two either way. Hmm. Yeah, because it's going to be yeah. one of those types. Yeah, although it's going to be interesting as well because you know there's other factors you're accounting. It's in Salt Lake City, which is at altitude. Yeah, Leon's yeah. got to get out there early. And I'm sure Kamara will be there much earlier again. So there's all these little factors. That's the point I'm trying to make about it being in these world title fights with yeah. two of the best guys on, you know, in the weight division. It's such small margins in this sport. Yeah. Literally one mistake and you're done, you know. So Anything can happen. And listen, Leon's got, you've got to be in it to win it. And yeah. Leon's more than deserving of this opportunity. And uh, I can't wait for it. I think it's no, going to be an amazing a, fight. What is it, four weeks? Mm -hmm. like four weeks away. A couple of weeks yeah, away, yeah. yeah. How's, um, how's Jai been in the gym? Because obviously, yeah. on the card last time out, I mean, I thought he was going to pull off a phenomenal. He looked unreal. Phenomenal. Yeah. He was beating to pull in the yeah. first round. First five minutes, he was outstanding. Jai, Jai he's great. He's great. Amazing striker. Just, uh, I think when he if he sticks to it and does what he does, you know, he, he's going to do great. Like whoever you put him in with, but uh, yeah, what he saw caught in the last one, obviously, he is a great fighter as well. So that's a tough test, but you know, I'm confident he's going to come back well. He's going to show how classy he is, show mm. what level he is, and he is that level. So just hopefully, he shows it. It's a shame for Jai because that that's four UFC fight, fights now and three defeats. Yeah. But when you look at those three defeats and the level of the people he's lost to, yeah, and his performances in those fights as well, yeah. you know, yeah. okay, he's been caught, okay, he's been stopped on occasion, but 
he's been competitive in those fights. Again, that, that fight in March, I went back and watched that last week. He wins that first round. His movement is excellent. He doesn't allow um, Tapora to find his distance at all. Tapora's fallen short. And it's only in the second round where he just for a second, for the first time, gets caught with his back against the fence. Yeah, yeah. And instead of sliding away, he starts trading. He throws a kick there. Yeah, he, he, he starts trading in, yeah. that, in the pocket. And that, of course, is what Tapora's yeah. waiting for. Because yeah. as the shorter guy, he, he wants needs to throw that. over the top, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. No, nah, he's sharp. Man. He's, he's good. Like, I don't know anything happened in the fight, but he's he's looking good. He's confident. You know, he's ready. He wants to make a statement. So yeah, I'm, I'm sure he's going to make it. Now, the, there was a, a rumor that has been floating around. That did, did, have you taken your dad up to Renegade at any point recently? <laughs> yeah, you have, yeah, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So this is going to be true. <laughs> then what I'm about to speak. Yeah, yeah. but uh, maybe a couple of lads came up to do a bit of filming, just get a bit of coverage and what have you. Yeah. And uh, there was a man that had stripped off near enough half naked, just leather in the living daylights out of one of the heavy bags. Is this true? <laughs> <laughs> I don't pay attention to him when I'm training. <laughs> I turn a blind eye what he's doing when I'm not looking. I guess it is true. Mate, yeah. Listen, that, that, that mat is full of killers, but that's a menace inside. He's in the back room somewhere. Smashing the, the, his absolutely <laughs> smashing the living daylights out of something. Yeah, no, that makes sense. He did say he was hitting the back, and I didn't see him, so that must have been it. Yeah, yeah, that must be true. Full stripped yeah. off, grunting away. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> oh, Still, got yeah. <laughs> Still got it. Still got it. There's got to be some of that footage knocking about. That. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Someone's got yeah. It. I ain't got it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm concerned for you as well because normally you're quite a, a mild-mannered man on the social media. Yeah, you only normally tweet in what we would class as low caps. You've gone full caps, <laughs> mate. Yeah, in a, in a tweet that you put out over the last 24 hours regarding the meal deal situation in the UK, you're gonna have to talk the people yes. through this. What's going on? I don't know if this is going on everywhere or what, but I went to go get something to eat on the way here, so I sort of rushed between training, and there's nothing. Like the fridge, there was nothing. I thought, hang on a minute, what's happening? <laughs> There's nothing there. So I thought, all right, I'll go for Tesco's. I'm going over to Boots, have a look in Boots. Nothing. I ain't got time to panic around. Look, I've got to go. It's <laughs> on so meal deal list today. Oh, yeah. my so, goodness. So, so bear in mind, people, this is a professional athlete. Yes. Right? Yeah, professional athlete. That's peak a performance. Peak so. performance mm -hmm. athlete that survives on, on the, meal deals. On the meal <laughs> deals from the service station. So we're talking sandwich, crisp, and a drink. That's what you're, that's what you're looking for today. Yeah. But all the supermarkets were out, mate. Everything was out, no sandwiches. I think they weren't even like the dregs of like the vegan ones, you know. Like there was no, nothing. No. So hungry. Yeah, shocker, <laughs> right? uh, are you sticking around for the uh, the atmosphere at the weekend? What are you are yeah, you taking yeah, it in? I'll be there Saturday. Yeah, it's going to be a bit different being there on a, as a fan, but it's going to be good. It'll frustrating be or not? Yeah, frustrating. Because last time was so special. It was like such a good moment. Good. Yeah, atmosphere. I want that moment. Yeah, like sitting there, it's going to be obviously it's. British fighters, they're front and centre. Half of my friends, like, I know most of the guys, so you want all of them to do well. As a British person and an MMA fan, I want all the British guys to do well anyway, so I will be having fun as a fan, but uh, yeah. yeah, it's not quite the same yeah. as fighting, but yeah. Just finally on this, because we are, I believe, in a real rich period for British mixed martial arts. You've spent a lot of time over in Canada training yeah. over there on, on an elite map, some elite guys and girls coming through there. Regarding the talent pool hmm. that we've got right now, where, where, where would you rate this compared to previous generations that have come through? Uh, I think this is the best the best time I've seen. You know, in, obviously, you got Bisbee's time where he was champion. There was that Dan Hardy was fighting for the title around the... Well, he wasn't champion, but yeah, Dan Hardy was coming up, fought for the title. But I just think the quantity of guys now and the quantity of guys that are knocking on the door, you mm. know, obviously you got Tom Aspinall, He's possibly this win here. He could be fighting for the title. Uh, myself, I'm sort of screaming for that top five shot. shot. Then uh, Leon Edwards fighting for the title soon. Paddy's probably one of the biggest stars in the sport at the minute, and he's only had two fights in the UFC. So I'm sure if he keeps winning, they'll get a fast track to the title. It's a great time for uh, you got Paul Craig in light. Paul Craig, yeah, if he does exactly, something yeah. crazy this weekend, you never know. I know yeah. that Jack's just coming off a little bit of a defeat. Yeah, but yeah. again. The, we're talking about an elite guy that he's fighting there and yeah, he's back in that mix sometime soon. Yeah, so like there's so many guys that you could push forward and obviously then you mentioned earlier uh, Makai, if he's coming through, like he's yeah. you know, he's going to be a promising sort of contender and I, I'm sure he's going to make a good run. Like, he seems to do all the right things, says all the right things, looks great when he fights, so we'll be interested to see how far he goes. The, the beauty of all those names as well is they're all based here. 
yeah. there was a time where yourself you had to go to Montreal where we had to see Bisping go to mm. ca uh, to California where a bunch of guys did all go over to ATT in Florida that was a common occurrence for yeah. for the, the bulk of British fighters mm. whereas now you know all those names Leon Paul Craig Aspinall yourself yeah, all UK based, and that if that more than anything shows how high level the coaching is now, but mm. also how busy the mats are and the high level yeah. the mats are. Because I'm sure you remember a time when you know there was just nobody in the UK for you to train with, yeah. Like, hence everyone, the reason why you went to TriStar, yeah, yeah. Like, especially the area I am, like further down in you know, the southeast, there's a few jiu jitsu gyms here and there, some good boxes around, but MMA guys is like there's some big guys, and then for me, I'm just like, oh, there's the odd big guy, a little guy. Just not enough, just mm. not enough high level competition. So I figured, yeah, I'll just start traveling away and go somewhere where all the best guys are. But yeah, now there's so many people here at that elite level, all in the UFC, and you know, like they're all doing great. So there's no reason not why not, you know? Hmm. Absolutely. If you uh, if you need any hype, men, to get whatever fight that you want, yes. then you just know let where we are. just let us you know. know. <laughs> let us know when the hands sorted, mate. Yeah, yeah, to will. rock and roll, pal, and we will. Uh, will do. We'll get shouting for a cater <laughs> or whoever it may be or that you Emmett, want. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah, yeah. yeah. We're coming for you all. That's it. We're for you all. Uh, listen, Ollie. Thank you so much for giving hey, up a little bit of time to come and join us. I can see that you're eyeing up the desserts, mate. You want to clear off? I've, already, I've already been through them. <laughs> They've been round twice. I've had a go on everything twice. <laughs> yeah. I didn't get that sandwich. So. He's on the full end. There you go, mate. Listen, thanks for being on the program, no, mate. Sure, mate. Um, yeah, I'll let me take that off you. Go and enjoy uh, what we got to put up here. Yeah, you can take the, yeah, take the water with you, mate. No bother whatsoever. Top man. Yeah. There you go, mate. See you in a bit. Uh, Arnold Arnold on there. Um, injured at the moment. Sadly, not in the action at the weekend. Uh, but we'll be back, fingers crossed, sometime soon, maybe October time. That sounds good. That card stacked it up, mate, but to have him on yeah. there as well, that would be tremendous. Well, I'd say those rumours of Stockholm are, are very real, November, December time. I think, uh, you know, we could see something this weekend with Paul Craig and Alex Gustafsson, maybe, if they both win. That, could, that would absolutely work in Stockholm at the back end of the year. And I'm sure Arnie would be up for that. I've just uh, received the message, right? Um, I've just been told off by my little lad, so I apologise that I'm breaking off here for a, a split second. You can obviously say hello to your kids too if you want, mate. Uh, but my little lad said he, he's watching the stream. I would say get to bed, but it's only half seven, so this is <laughs> fine. Up. I've just now got to be conscious of the bad language that maybe we Correct. use on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, so Ted, Lila, that is actually working. <laughs> all right, I'll be back after the show at the weekend. Do you want to do yours? Well, all I will say to my kids is don't forget to put the chickens to bed. Oh, you're gonna to have to explain this now because there'll be people that don't know to, don't know I've that you turned into Dr. Do. I've got chickens. I've gone full the good life. I didn't know, didn't know whether you realised, but there's a global recession on at the moment. It's people eating out of food banks. It's a hard world out there. So, purchased myself six chickens. Yeah. Well, four, five hens and a cock. Someone told me I needed a cock. Actually, you don't need a cock. Ted, don't laugh at that joke. Fair hens. <laughs> but yeah, I'm getting five eggs a day. We're, we're living on eggs in the Pete's house. That's the oh, way yeah. things are. Yeah. Have you have you uh, come accustomed now to what is the protein in the egg and what is the vitamins in the yes. egg? Yes. You're, you're aware of this now? As you I got said, it mixed up, didn't you? As I said on the show, yeah. the quality's in the yolk. Right. The protein's in the white, but the quality, the nutrition is in the yolks. Always eat your yolk, kids. There you go. Um, listen, before we get our next guest on, and we love this guy because he has got impressions for days as well as being an absolute killer in the octagon, uh, just a quick reminder about the new platform that has just launched. Go to blaze.blockasset.co. That is the website where you can now burn your block. You don't have to go to, to the QR code no more. You don't have to have uh, a stationary wallet or anything like that to get involved with. The platform is there for you. It's dead easy. And there's a little treat, a little reward. You can choose how you're burning that block. You can burn it and enter whatever competition you want. So we've got three competitions up on uh, the platform at the moment. One is a training session with the Smash Brothers. Yes, I really did say that out loud. You get to train with those two lunatics. It is available for you. All you got to go and do is burn your block. All the uh, information on what type of block that you need to burn is available for you. Uh, we've also got the Yulia tracksuits. Exclusive money can't buy nice. tracksuits one of them. that you'll see all the block asset guys knocking about in. Uh, and of course, we've got the tickets for UFC London. So it's completely up to you. Just a quick one as well, because obviously if you're in the know with the type of tokens that you can obviously acquire from block asset, you'll know that there's two different types of token. There's a block token and there's an asset token. Um, this, these are for block token burns. Next week, there will be things on that platform for asset burns all right so don't be getting your knickers in a twist messaging the lads going got all these assets and i want to burn them 
I, I want to get involved in some of these competitions and I'm not allowed to. Don't worry, there'll be some new stuff, new opportunities um, on the website for you next week. But for now, it's block tokens that we're burning and it's blaze.blockasset.co. And if you're up for it, take on the Smash Brothers in Stockholm. A little bit of a treat. For Absolutely. Are we doing so far, Mike? Can we have a little look on screen and see what, what block we've burned? Have we got any, have we got any figures at the moment? I think I've seen something pop up through the corner of my eye before. I'll tell, tell you what I have noticed, right? People are now starting to have a drink and have a chat amongst themselves. Know, and they're thinking yeah. to themselves, these two are boring as they oh, come. Oh, look at that. 4,600 block. block. That's been so far. There you go. In what? 30 minutes? Amazing. Fuck and roll, mate. We should be on commission for this stuff, shouldn't we? <laughs> tell you what. Things um, you'll do for the T-shirt. Yeah, hey? mate. Tell you what. <laughs> um, let's get our next guest on here, right? Because we had him on uh, recently, didn't we? And he was absolutely fantastic. It was in the build-up to his fight. Um, sadly, he was on the wrong end of uh, yeah, a decision. We are discussing that tonight. All right, we can do that. We can get stuck into uh, that. Uh, but it is our man, man. And I tell you what, he's brought he's brought his shoe game, mate. He's, he's brought, brought the heat game. on his feet. He's, get yourself sat down. I like this. He's he's gone he's gone suited yes, and he's gone Jordan. Look at that. Gurum, there you go, my friend. Gurum Kutateladze. Welcome back thank to you. the block party, my brother. Thank How you, are thank you? Thank you so much. Everything is good. Thank you so much, brother. How are you guys? Mate, Mate I was well, doing well until I seen your all, rig. No, and I'm no, like, no. look at that. No, outfit, no, no. Man. First of all, I have to give you respect, both of you, brother, for your shoes. That's yes. Uh, <laughs> so, you brought the uh, it's, 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 it's done. The conversation is done here. It's all good. You brought it's all good. Yeah. Listen, at some point tonight, we are doing Tony Montana. Okay, the people need to hear. Okay, the man, no problem. Man. See, we're up and no running. Problem, That's what we like to see. We've got that. We're no gonna problem. Do... <laughs> Listen, all these scouts that you've been knocking about, we're going to obviously get some of the... the a little bit of that as well. Yeah, a little bit of that. Yeah, bit of that those boys as well. We okay. need to do some of that impression. <laughs> but let's talk fighting first and foremost, mate. Let's do so. Last time we spoke, it was in the build-up to the fight. We were excited because of the magnitude of what that could have been against Sarukian. It didn't... You were on the wrong end... Of the decision now Correct. that the dust has settled, how have you? How do you look back at that fight and what are your thoughts about it? Um, you know, I don't see myself as a loser. You know, uh, I don't see myself as a person who lost the fight. I see myself as a winner and as a champion. And uh, but you know, the facts are facts. What is on the paper? That's the main thing. That's the most important. You know. Uh, but I have to take the heat, I have to chew it, swallow it, and move on forward, you know. And uh, unfortunately, that's a part of the game. It all comes down to round three, yeah? And it's that, it's that last 10, 15 seconds of that third round where there's a moment where you've got him going. A sensational knee to the chest, that's what it was. It was a sensational knee from you to his chest. The referee wrongly picked it up as a foul. You know, in the end of the day, you know, like, I think like this. Of course, I, I, I was very mad and stuff like this. You know, inside, it's just like ripping apart everything, you know. I haven't been losing for nine years, you know. And after, like, such a loss, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and, big, and, and the reason is, like, this kind of thing, you know, like... A mistake. Somebody else's you know, mistake. And, uh, and, you know, when I lose, when I lose, I, I say it, you know, I'm so extremely honest to myself, you know, when I feel that I lose the fight, I say it. And uh, I think everybody saw it too, you know, with Mateusz uh, Gamrot. When, I, when we fought, you know, I said it, you know, because that's how I felt. And I was going to say it. But this time it wasn't like this, you know. But I think in the end of the day, God has a plan for me, you know. Mm. So uh, that's supposed to be like that, you know. And I, I cannot just stuck on this thought, you know. I have to move on forward and I have to keep positive thinking. And I have to look forward, you know. And I just want to get back as soon as possible, you know, and prove everybody wrong, you know. Like, like really, like, as soon as possible. And the cravings I have now, you know, I think I didn't, I didn't feel, it, feel this for many years, you know. And, of course, to prove to myself, you know, to prove to everybody, to the whole world, you know, that that's not how it's supposed to be. If we just... 
take the result of the fight to one side, did you enjoy the fight? Yes, I You looked like it. you were enjoying yourself in yes, there. Yes, I like allowed it. The brain was constantly going, thinking, working out plans. Yeah. Okay, this is a new problem. We're going to deal with this in this moment. It felt like that was the narrative of the fight from an outside looking in. That's what was going on inside your head. Yeah, that's that's true, actually. You know, like... You know, when you find a flow, you know it's uh, it's fun. When yeah. you when you are in Zoom, you know, and uh, when you find this uh, tunnel vision, you know, like it feels good. It feels amazing, you know. And I, I think I, I felt it, you know, like uh, I I spoke with my father, you know, about it. And my father have been coached since I was five years old, you know, my coach. He have been there for me. I've been training with him, like on the carpet in the apartment, you know, wrestling with him when I was a kid. So. You know, when I start dropping, uh, dropping my guard, you know, and like uh, doing like head movement, like crazy head movement, you know, and stuff like this, he get angry at me, you know, like, but I felt confident, you know, I felt like, oh, I, I feel good, you know, yeah. I, ha I have everything under control, you know, it felt like that. But of course, it wasn't enough. And uh, my father told me I would punish you for this, you know, I would not let <laughs> you do this, you know, I would stop you and tell you like, what the fuck are you doing? Excuse me for the language, you know. <laughs> Like, you have to stop with that bullshit, you know, like, <laughs> he would probably slap me, you know, like, and like, uh, keep your guard up, you know, and uh, yeah, but it is what it is. You know? Yeah, the, the, the thing, I think if you know what you're watching, if you, if you know MMA and you know exactly what you're watching, from my point of view, watching that fight, first round, you, second round is a lot closer. You could give it the other way. It was the. The, the changes that you make in round number three, because three. in a, such a high level chess match like that was, where you're constantly thinking, constantly moving, both guys are going for the same thing. To be able to make those small adjustments in that moment at that highest, highest level, that's the thing of beauty. That's the thing of beauty to watch. Yeah, you know, I, I think that's true it's really nice and it's i really appreciate you know like when people notice these kind of things you know like small things like because it's like a chess you know this like puzzle and you, i have to give credit to my opponent too you know and to damir and to mateus to both guys you know like they're amazing fighters you know very high level class fighters and you have to give them what they deserve you know but it's a chess again you know you get the problem you know you stand in front of a problem and you have to solve it, you know, like, uh, and uh, this is like never ending story, you know, like Ooh. maybe next minute or next 10 seconds, you get another problem. You have to solve it. Yeah. Next puzzle, you have to solve it and so on and so on. Uh, in the same time, not just solving the problems, but, but letting your opponent to solve your puzzle because uh, that's the main thing, you know, like you can't, so you can't listen to opponent's music and dance his dance, you know. Of course, you have to you have to force opponent to listen to your music. That's such an and, amazing and thing. Force that. him to dance your dance. Your beat, you understand? Mate, dance I'm, I'm going to yeah? get that tattooed on my chest, right? I'm not going to listen to your music <laughs> and dance to your dance. I'm dancing my dance. One hundred percent. And listening to my music. <laughs> <laughs> um, how many people have contacted you about getting uh, a, a trip to Georgia? Based on the the film that the boys made, incredible. You know, like the the trip was like wow. You know, I felt myself as a tourist. You know, yeah. like it was my country, my home country, and stuff like this. But the experience, you know, that you're going through is like unbelievable. It's like you cannot you, I cannot describe it. You know, mm. like I cannot describe it. And the video, of course, like the movie is like amazing, but it's still not, it's, it's not real life, you know? Yeah, but you cannot, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot like, you cannot like you realize, you yeah. cannot realize the, 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 the power of the mountains, for example, the power of the wind, you know, the power mm. of like whatever, you know, like, like dirty, the power of dirty Jimmy, you know, like, and stuff like this. Um, but the guys block as a team, you know, like, wow, brother, this is like amazing, you know, like such a great job they've done. We know, like, to transferring the feelings, yeah, the most emotions, you know, and everything through this movie is amazing, you know, like, this, like, good. Like, what was the response like, yeah, in Georgia? What were the 
People who watch that uh, on TV. Uh, uh, TV cinemas. Bro, cinemas, 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 yeah, yeah, cinema. Cinema. It was in a cinema. <laughs> wow. It was in the cinema, brother. It's crazy. It was in the cinema. I was like, what? When they told me, when they, the guys told me it's going to be on this, and I'm like, movie star, Are man. you kidding me? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Wow. It's crazy. Wow. What did, but, your, what did your friends and family think of it? Like, you know, like friends, of course, like, you know, they're like, wow, wow, wow. But the main, you know, is my mother and father, you of know, course. how they, my mother, how she react, you know, like, of course, like, I know how she reacts, tears, you know, and she's like, it's a happiness, it's sadness, it's so mixed up feelings, you know, like, yeah, I don't know. So I, I wasn't there, you know, like when she was watching the whole movie, so I can't, I cannot say, I cannot like describe or I cannot exactly tell what happened, you know. It's crazy though, that it's, it was in the cinemas, in the, in the movie theaters, it was broadcast right across Eastern Europe on various television channels. It went absolutely everywhere. It's crazy. It's crazy. Thanks to Blockbuster Team, great Ethan and Christian, you know. It was like, incredible, yeah. The, the trip was amazing. And I hope, like, I hope you guys and everybody, you know, like, can experience this, you know. Like, it's something you have to do before you die. Yeah. You know, like. After listen. watching that video, I'm definitely going to go. <laughs> Mate. Definitely going to go. Listen, if anybody's got any brains at the UFC, they'll be making UFC Georgia, right? Yeah. yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? That Stick a room at the top of the that bill, and then amazing. everybody, all the fans can come and enjoy that. That would be amazing. That would be something. Yeah, man. Wow. Well. Now that you've been in the movie theaters, yeah, now that you're a movie star. Don't say this. Yeah, man. Now really that you're a movie star, really. and now that we've found out that you can do some wicked impressions. That's why I put that's why I put the like suit on the <laughs> That's brand. it, man. <laughs> Red copy job. So now that we know that you're a movie star and you can do wicked impressions, yeah? When, when, <laughs> when's the next when's the next big you know big movie? When when you when you do the next one? Have I people been on to you wanting bro. to do some acting? No, bro. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You're desperate to do Tony Montana, right? You? You're desperate know, to do right. it. <laughs> for, well, what's that, man? Huh? A fucking lizard come in your mouth, man. huh? You know how to get chicks in this country, huh? Okay. First, you get money. When you get money, you get a power. When you get power, you get a woman. Okay, <laughs> enough. <man. laughs> well, have you, have you I can, I can do a whole movie, brother. Yeah, I can do, do I can do a fucking cockroach. I can do everything. <laughs> What the fuck you think I am, huh? <laughs> okay. Listen, the best thing about this is that the accent's absolutely bang on. It's the face. It's, it's the face and the whole body, man. Yeah, no, no, it's, uh, <laughs> the channels is in the Tony Montana. Amazing. Beautiful Tony Montana. Uh, Amazing. What, um, what uh, new Scouse words have you learned from Ethan and, uh, and Christian? Uh, have you learned anything fresh? Uh, no, like, uh, I hope, like, Friday, Saturday night, we can get some birds, you know, like, and stuff <laughs> like this, bro, you know, like... <laughs> <laughs> there you go that's what Guram's been going yeah, to be up to over the next Friday <laughs> and Saturday night the <laughs> of every single member oh. of Block Asset staff has just gone he said what <laughs> <laughs> they say what oh my god <laughs> Guram's in London for a good time that's always uh, there, right? no, you're, no, you're no, here for no. some fun it's always good time with Block Asset absolutely team. mate absolutely. absolutely listen you said that you want to get back you want to you, you, you want a quick turn around what uh, what have you got in mind? I mean, we've been speaking a lot about UFC 280 in Abu Dhabi. Is that something that you're looking at or are you looking even earlier than that? Well, Hamzat. Hamzat Nate Diaz card. Um, yeah, you know, to say the truth, I don't want to fight like on the same fight card as my teammates. It's it's too much, you know. Yeah, it's we like, noticed. We saw, we saw you screaming and shouting when you're uh, a fan in the, in yeah, the yard, man. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's another story, bro. So I, I, uh, it's it's too much, you know. It's like... Uh, but, but if the UFC go to Stockholm, which is rumoured, for November, December, hundred percent. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna go for it, hundred percent. But I really would like to fight before that too, you know. And yeah, as soon as I like after my fight, you know, I said directly to the guys like, "Hey, Abu Dhabi, it is," you know. And I really hope like they can get me to Abu Dhabi fight card, you know. Like, and there is already like uh, some good lightweights, you know. It's already some good matchups. So, uh, and I'm ready for anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, anybody, it doesn't matter who. Like, I don't know, 19 0, 23 1, 30 0, yeah. doesn't matter. Anybody. 35 0, I don't know, doesn't matter. Bring where anybody, you know, I don't, I don't care. I don't care. And you can see it on my two first fights, too. You know, I, I don't care. I just want to go in and prove everybody, the whole world, world 
and show who I am, you know, and what I deserve. What's important about that card as well is the lightweight title is going to be on the line. You've also got Benil Dariush and Gamrot on that card as well. So you, you want to be on the cards alongside... He's beating Gamrot. He's beating him. I know, but you want to be on the card alongside other top lightweights so the world can see, so the world can go, yeah, these guys are good, but wait a minute. I watched Grum earlier on. He was even better. Yes, of course. But, um, you know, I'm a man of a principle too, you know. Like, I had this thought also, like, oh, when they get back to Abu Dhabi, I want to fight there because that's where I did my debut, you know. And I would really would love to get back there, you know. So, uh, um, and of course, lightweights are there, you know, like contenders, etc., etc. My future opponents, you know, and... Uh, Here's a question for you. On, on the lightweight division compared to other divisions, and this is not meant to be disrespectful to other divisions, lightweight is stacked with top quality contenders. Top 15 yeah. is elite. The 15 after that are all elite. Do you think becoming the lightweight champion now, today, in the UFC is probably the most difficult thing to do compared to the other weight divisions? I think, yes. You know, like, starting on, like, maybe half a year ago, one year ago, because uh, all these guys, as I said, like, I said it like, I'm saying this already like two years, you know, almost two years. They're going to come, these ex-Soviet Union animals, you know, and they're going to take over. They're going to take over the, the nowadays elite, you understand? Because all the respect to legends, you know, of the sport and, and, and stuff like this, but it's different hunger, it's different mentality, it's different drive, you know, these guys have. And uh, these guys, we, you know, I'm, I'm including myself there too, you know. And uh, I think, like, put, like, all, all these guys, like, I don't know, Rafael, uh, Damir, uh, Islam is already there, but uh, Mateusz, there is, like, five, six guys, you know. Yeah. Put them with whoever from top ten, you know. Uh, Arman, you know. I think we're going to drive over them, you know, and no disrespect. I say this like, I say how I think, you know, and I'm not disrespecting anybody, all the respect to all the fighters, you know, but I think that's how it is. And, uh, and I think that's a hard truth of nowadays reality. And um, I think who, the, the, the guy who's going to be champion, you know, like, like since one year ago and now, you know, and maybe one year forward, you know, is like the, the hardest uh, nut <laughs> you, can, you can say, you know, like, yeah, in the, in the division. And of course, like everybody has its own like prime time, you know, yeah. I can understand. You know, maybe some guys are like, he's a champion, mm -hmm. but he's ranked number 12 or 15 or yeah. 20, you know, till he gets there. Yeah. It's going to take time. But, yeah. But I agree with you. I, I, I so, totally agree. I totally agree, you know. That but, said, do you think Islam gets the job done against Charles? I would like, it's, it's to, I would like to see Islam tough. have one it's, more, beat somebody in the top five before he got this opportunity. But listen... If the opportunity comes, you take it with yeah, both hands. Yeah, of course, hands. 100%, 100%. And he deserve it, you know. He has been there for so long, too, you know. He has been beating guys, you know, of course. He deserve it, you know, his shot. And, uh, you know, I don't. it's very hard. I, 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 I am really interesting. It's very interesting fight, you know. For me, like, I really, like, wonder, you know, how it's going to go. For myself, you know, as a fan of a fighter and especially as a lightweight myself, uh, as a, I'm looking at them as my future opponents too. So it's very interesting. But it also depends, you know, like Charles, he can do some crazy stuff sometimes, you know, like he can knock people like left and right, and, but sometimes he can do like some crazy stuff and he like, but come on, bro, he, you... How can you do this? You know, this yeah. kind of like small mistake, you know, that like you think like he would, he would never do, you know. 
So it depends from which leg you're gonna stand up from the from the bed, you know, a little bit like this. But um, of course, you can't put ev everything on Charles either. You have to give Islam his, you know, he's a he's a tough, very tough guy. And, uh, Absolutely. So um, yeah, just uh, just promise me one thing, right? When you do become champion, and they put the microphone in your face. Do Tony Montana. <laughs> <laughs> Promise me. Okay, man. Okay. <laughs> no problem, man. That's all I want, man. Antonio fucking Montana. That's all I need. That's all I need. That's the viral moment. He loves it. <laughs> he <laughs> loves it. <laughs> Listen, Guram, it's a pleasure, as always, yeah, to be man. in your company. Thank it's you. great to see you smiling and upbeat. And we cannot wait to see you back doing your thing. And fingers crossed it is Abu Dhabi because we're going to be there, man. Yes. Thank so we you get so to much, see it up guys. close and personal. Thank you so much. Really appreciate your time and your invitation. That I, I'm really thankful that I'm here. Thank Listen, you. He's, beware, he's out and about now in London That's on a Friday it. and a Saturday night. With if, the you're, if, boys, if your okay? girl's out in London tonight with her girls, beware. Ringer, get because a hold right a suit now. On, he's got the Jordans on, he's looking fly. Keep an eye on him, all right? <laughs> you, brother. Thank nice you, up, bro. Thank you so much. Good to the lads are joining us on the show. Um, hopefully you enjoyed that one. We've got uh, another guest that uh, is going to be joining us very, very shortly. But just a quick reminder as well, we are burning block tonight. There's prizes up for grabs with people watching the show, whatever you are in and around the world and watching this live stream. Block, sorry, blaze.blockasset.co. Go there, burn some block, and you can enter competitions for these three prizes. Look at that there. Uh, Smash Brothers Till training session Hamza in Sweden with, with Hamza and Till. Uh, that's a legit one. It's not like... Stunt doubles or anything like that. It's a no, proper one. And they're, not, and they're not going to do tippy-tappy stuff either. It's going to be a proper training session. Uh, so make sure you're prepared for that. We've also got the opportunity to get the uh, exclusive Yulia Block Asset tracksuit. The money can't buy. You can't get them in the shops. Uh, so get yourself uh, involved in that competition if you wish. And also, if you love your UFC, you have failed to get a ticket uh, for UFC London. Well, there's a couple of tickets there. And these are stellar tickets. They're on the floor as close as you can be. Uh, to the octagon so get yourself entered into that and over the next 24 hours people will be finding out uh, whether they've got themselves uh hands on yeah, those types of prices i'm gonna throw in a bevy with me in the after party with those tickets as well you know what i mean i'm a man of the people have you just put yourself up as a prize a man of the people i will buy you a drink in the after party after the ufc event as well because i'll be enough. celebrating man it's going to be the best event ever We're gonna fair, be enough. Absolutely fair enough now then that event by the way where you can hopefully win some of those tickets is going to be headlined by this man here. It he was very kindly joining us on the show in the middle of a fight week. The one and only Razor himself, Mr. Kirch Blades. How are you, buddy? You good? I'm good, sir. I'm good. You, you look it. Can I just this? Can we just talk about that hoodie? That is man, a special that hoodie. That is sir. a serious piece of kit, mate. You're looking well. One of my favorites. I always like to bring it. Oh. One of my my favorite hoodies. I like to bring it whenever I go out out of the country. Yeah. Looking good. Look at listen. Um. UFC London at the weekend, headlining uh, the event. We've obviously been bigging this up throughout the whole course of the week. There's two big heavyweight fights coming up in Europe, which we think might then chicane yeah. semi-finals towards that world title. Uh, blast! Is that how you're seeing it? That this is basically elimination time, ready for the uh, UFC goal. Yeah, um, essentially, I believe that's why the UFC is scheduled it at the way they scheduled it because I fought back in March. Aspinall fought week before, Tuivasa gone week, two weeks before that. So they knew that we'd all be healthy, we'd all be available around the right the right time to have another matchup. So, yeah, the winner of this fight is going to get the winner of Tuivasa and gone. That's how I believe it's going to go. It makes, it makes the most sense, I think. Were you given an option, Curtis, that they say this is what we're doing? Or did they just call you and say, you got Aspinall, you're going to London? Yeah, no, I wasn't really given an option because I, I was asking for Gone. I asked for Gone in January. Then I got the other guy, the last guy I fought, Darkest. And then after the Darkest fight, I asked for Gone again, and I got Aspinall. But I was like, Aspinall, he's not a bad uh, consolation prize. So, Re regarding that last performance against Darkest, now when anybody ever speaks about you in the heavyweight division, they always talk about your wrestling base and how good you are in that. In that Not field. anymore. Not anymore, man. <laughs> Some man's got hands and he's putting people to kit, man. <laughs> that then sends a shockwave through the whole of the heavyweight division because when people think a fighter is one-dimensional, they obviously think, okay, I can do this against this person and I will be successful. But now... The knockout power is obviously evident against an elite guy like Dorcas, who everybody was tipping and taking yeah. to the next level. But it's the way that you are blending strikes to wrestling. That is the frightening thing 
that a lot of people are obviously now talking about. Yeah, I think that's just um, a lot of people. I've been telling people since 2018, I have I have the skill to strike. It's just I also have the wrestling in my back pocket. And on the feet, it's more like 60, 40, I'll win. On the ground, it's like 80, 20. So I'm just playing the odds. I use my wrestling, especially if a guy has a major hole in his in his wrestling. I want to take advantage of that. But it's not because I don't believe in my hands, just because that was the path of least resistance. But that last fight, I, I didn't do that on purpose. I just I went into that fight thinking I'm I'm not going to overly rely on the wrestling. I'm not going to m- make that a major emphasis. I w- I believed in my hands and I I was going to wait until the takedown presented. It just it never happened. I was able to catch him on the feet, and that's always an option. It's happened uh, before I knocked out Junior Dos Santos on the feet. I did use wrestling, but I didn't actually get a takedown. But a lot of people forget about that yeah. knockout. With Daukas as well, it, it was more the threat in the back of his mind because yeah. his hands weren't up here. His hands it. were down here, which allowed you to faint and throw the shot and catch him, obviously. So that's the advantage that you've got over all these guys in the heavyweight division. That the last thing they want is you to take them down, which is always going to give them a second doubt. No one's ever going to throw a kick at you, for instance, no. <laughs> for that exact reason. That's one of the things that we've, we've noticed over the years. Like when we watch film of a uh, future opponent, a lot of guys, they do like to throw kicks. Volkov, Jorginho, Junior Dos Santos. But whenever I fight these guys, they change their whole, whole style. They become a lot more hesitant. Like you said, they're thinking about the takedown, thinking about the wrestling, which slows them down, which – speeds me up in a way. So, yeah, that's that's the X factor. Them having to always be aware and cognizant of the takedown, it makes it easier for me to potentially land a knockout on the feet. Yeah. You said earlier about mentioning um, you wanted the Sidogan fight. You were pursuing the Sidogan fight. Is that because you believe Sidogan is a better fit for you than maybe Aspinall or Tuivasa? Or was it because Sidogan obviously just fought for the title and you think, listen... The, first, the best guy to fight is the guy that's just had the title fight. Yeah, it wasn't. They all present unique issues. Tuivasa, there's a pro and a con to all of them. Tuivasa hits the hardest, but he's also the least athletic. Cyril Gans, the most athletic, but I think he has the least amount of power. Tom is a bit a uh, mixture of both. He's got power. He's got athleticism. Um, but, yeah. Like you said, I wanted Khan simply because he had j- j- just had a title fight. And I was there. I watched it. And yeah. that's when I called him out, like, the night of that fight. I was like, I'll fight him next. I'll let him rest. And we can go. But then I ended up getting the darkest fight. So, I, lo- I love speaking to athletes, obviously, in the immediate aftermath of a victory because, obviously, the, uh, the elation that they are feeling. But I also enjoy speaking to athletes and contemplating defeats and the bumps that they face in their mixed martial arts career. The only bumps that are coming your way are against the very, very top guys, obviously against Francis and against against Derek. What were the learns that you took from from those contests? Um, well, I'll start with the most recent one, the Derek Lewis fight. Um, the thing I learned the most from that fight was to be more patient. I think the reason he got the the, the knockout was because I forced that takedown attempt. I didn't have to go for it. I just I, it wasn't organic. I forced and he was able to see it. He was able to land the counter. Um, so I learned, yeah, I just got to be more patient. I got to set things up. I can't force things. And that's what I took into that last fight. I wasn't going to force the takedown. Like, had he just presented it uh, easy one, I would have gone for it, but it never happened. And um, the Engano fights, the most recent one, the one in 2018 in Beijing, there wasn't a whole lot we can learn from that one. That was just, it was so fast. He just caught me. I think the biggest thing I took from that was just how to bounce back. I like get sometimes it just it doesn't go your way. You just got to bounce back. You got to get back to the drawing board. And that's what I did. I wasn't really like depressed. And I was like, hey, he got me. It's, it's heavyweight. It only takes one strike and he was able to land it. And then our first fight, my my uh, debut against him, I felt really good about that one because even though I did lose, I don't know if you actually you watched that one 
but it was a doctor's stoppage, and I felt going into the last round he was starting to slow down, and I was starting to pick up steam. So even though I lost, I I felt all right about it. I yeah. was able to take away the I belong. That was my, my UFC debut, and I wasn't sure whether or not I was, like, on the level. But after that fight, I knew I belonged in the UFC. Mate, how exciting is this division now? It felt like a little period, maybe a couple of years ago, that it was just a bit stagnant, you know yeah. what I mean? Right now, it's like everywhere you look thinking, geez, man, there's so many wonderful matchups, but also so many guys that you can make a real claim for and say, this guy might be the champion in six yeah. months or, or 12 months' time. And obviously, you want to, you're one of those names in that conversation. Um, yeah, this is the most ex exciting and interesting that the division's been since I've been in the UFC. I've been in the UFC since 2016, and from 16 to 17, 18, 19, and even 20, it was a lot of, like, stagnation because we're all waiting for uh, DC versus Stipe, and they had to do it. It took them two and a half years to do the three Big fights. Out. Yeah. And then Brock Lesnar tosses his his name in the hat and went like, is he going to get a title shot? But that never happened. But it was something to worry about, something to think about. And now you got uh, John Jones. He's pumping up. We don't – is he a heavyweight? Is he not a heavyweight? I don't know. Is he going to have that interim title what shot? What do you make of all that? It's funny, frustrating. Do you think you said, come on, man, if you're talking the talk, let's walk the wall. Let's <laughs> yeah, get in there. Exactly. I stopped worrying about it because it just is – it can be stressful to – worry about things that are out of your um, controls. I just stop worrying about it. Like, if he ever does actually step on the scale, become a heavyweight, he, he's a potential opponent. And that's when I'll talk about him. Yeah. Was there a time there when Brock briefly came back that you thought, oh, I might get to fight Brock, you know, being a wrestling guy, I might I, get to fight Brock? I knew he wasn't going to fight me. I knew he was coming back. If he did come back, it was for one payday. And I, yeah. I'm not a payday. I'm a hard fight i'm not yeah, a yeah. payday so i i knew that wasn't happening but i would have i'd be down for that to go against brock lesnar yeah, yeah. You're, you're a fighter that obviously you're not a smack talker you just go about your business you do your mixed martial arts and you obviously deliver time and time again inside the octagon and the amount of people that we speak to in the heavyweight division that say you're an absolute horrible matchup yeah. you're, you're, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're, you're all you're, of them mate they all do they all do that you're a fighter that has to earn the opportunity. Do you know what I mean? You've got to you've got to go through the mill, yeah. go through the fights to get to where you need to get to. Do you find that frustrating when you maybe see some others that mouth well, off that well, say the odd thing? The other three in the conversation, the four we're talking about, the other three haven't got nowhere near your experience in the UFC. But once again, you're having to go through that mill again because nobody above them, if you like, is going yeah. is going to go. Yeah, go on. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that fight. I mean, I get it. It's a it's a part of what makes me me. I don't talk smack. I don't do all that extra stuff that other guys do. I get it. There's a pro and a con. When you do that extra stuff, it does elevate you a little faster. I just I made a decision. I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. It's not in me. I don't want to fake it. I don't have any McGregor in me. Like if I could do it, I would do it because I do see the positives the of doing it. But I'm just not good at it, so I'm not even gonna fake it because people would see it they'd be like oh this this guy so um it is it can be frustrating at times but then i just go back into my uh wrestling background like i just grind it's a grind i'm gonna grind and as long as i'm earning good money which i am it makes it easy it makes it easy to get up at 8 a.m and do the lifts and do the sprints and all that stuff yeah well, one thing that you do have it's the coolest nickname in the heavyweight division, man. You know what I mean? Obviously, your, your surname kind of plays to that a little bit. But who, who gave you razor? It, pl pl please tell me that it's uh, someone within. Surely from the wrestling match. Yeah, they must have done. I wish there was a great story behind it. Um, I was an amateur, and everyone, you got to have a fight name. So me and my old manager, because I'm with Fainer Sports now. So this is my, my manager from a decade ago when I first started. We were just sitting around brainstorming like, what? What can we do? And he he came up with it. It just rolls right, off perfect. the tongue, razor blades, and it it didn't fit me. I I didn't think it fit me until after the Alistair fight, because but prior to that, I haven't I hadn't actually used my elbows. Yeah, man. It didn't want to bleed like that. But then after that, it really stuck. 
Well, yeah. I was I was going to say right. What came first? Was it you cutting people up, or was it the, so? It was the other way around. So you play to the nickname now. You're going. Well, I've got a cool nickname, man. I better start cutting some people up. I better start throwing some elbows around. You know. Yeah, I wanted to make it stick because you can't be a guy who doesn't make anyone bleed and have a name like razor blades. You know. That's facts. That's facts. Um, listen, how does this play out for you at the weekend? It's going to be a sensational packed arena 20,000 fans obviously you know that the majority of the fans in there are going to be cheering for the hometown fighter how does it play out in your mind um from the first round all the way to the potential fifth round i'll be the aggressor i'll be the one advancing i'll be the one doing uh the uh, uh pressuring that's when i fight my best when i'm walking down my opponents not the other way around so that's that's my mentality, always be be first and be the more aggressive uh, fighter. What we've heard from a lot of previous Aspinall opponents is it was the speed that caught them out. It wasn't necessarily the power. It wasn't necessarily anything. It, they all keep saying the same thing. Speed is so quick. What have you done in camp to kind of prepare for that? Have you been training with smaller guys? Or is there anything particularly that you've done? I'm pretty fast myself. I, I think I'm just as fast, but I'm also heavy. I'm bigger. So I think my speed combined with my power will be enough to to um, negate his speed and power. Do you know what I love? I saw, I saw a thing on social media where you had an impromptu um, bumping into each other at Nando's. The rest, <laughs> yeah, the rest Nando's, of the, he, he was oh, eating yeah. his chicken yeah, and you yeah. were walking past or whatever it may be. There seems to be an awful amount of respect yeah. between you and Tom, those are the best matches when he understands I'm just a martial artist. And there's no hate. I understand he's just a martial artist. You don't have to be Jorge versus Kobe. Yeah. If that's what fans need to see in order to watch, and then I really fans, you should be able to just get hyped up because this is going to be a hell of a fight. This is a two top five heavyweight mixed martial artists. That should be enough. Yeah, Two them. huge men wearing tiny gloves. Yeah. Anything can and generally does happen. Can't wait. Especially in mixed martial arts when they're more multifaceted. Exactly. This, this is the fascinating thing because you, we could make arguments, this is going to play out on the feet, this is going to play out on the floor, this is going to play out here. It's crazy, man. Yeah. Such a great fight. Listen, what, what we've got to do, sorry, before we let you go, the way I break it down is, guy's never been outside of 10 minutes. He's never had a single fight go past two rounds. Three, four, and five... You would think with your experience, you've won. Not only have you fought over four ra five rounds, you've won over five rounds. That's a 25 minute fight against Alexander Volkov, a, a, you know, a top guy in this division. So that would point towards your experience is deep water. Get him to the deep water. Let's see what happens then. Is that is that what you're thinking as well? I would agree. Um, I do have the experience that I have in an multiple five round. I, I think having the experience of being in that, um, I call it the, the dark place, that fifth round where yeah. your vision's blurry, you can't hear anything, and it's just like you're like a zombie. I've been there. I, I know how to react when it when it happens, so I'm going to re rely on that um, experience, and I think that's going to be the difference. And that's something no fighter can recreate in the gym. That fifth round in front of a huge audience, you know, when your adrenaline dump is now gone, you're exhausted, you're, as you say, you're bleary-eyed. That's the question. To, and, and, and to be fair to Aspinall, Tom Aspinall, he said the same thing this week. He was like, never experienced that. He, he would be a liar if he said, oh, I'm totally prepared for because he's never, because I wasn't prepared. The first time I did the full five rounds with Volkov, I've never been that tired in my life, and I've been an athlete my whole life, and that's that was the very first time, and I'll, I'll never forget how that how that felt. You're gonna uh, you're gonna have to give me the link to where I can get one of those hoodies, man, because yeah, that is absolutely unreal. stellar. All right, bro. Listen, Curtis, thank you so much for uh, joining us on the show. Yeah. Um, enjoy the next 24 hours or so, and then we'll see you Saturday night under the lights, man. Can't wait to see it go down. Thank you guys for having me. No, you're welcome. Thanks, man. Listen, we'll Jeez. let you get on. We'll let you get on. Thank you very much, buddy. What's up, man? Uh, what's up, man, Curtis? Thank you very much, man. Thank you, sir. Um, Appreciate it. Curtis Razor Blades, uh, joining us on Hands the like show. Hands like shovels, Mate, the man. Big guy. Jeez. <laughs>
the stage just shook as he got off. I know, amazing. There Listen, for, for, for Curtis to give up his time, 48 hours ahead of a main event in London, absolutely unreal. Can't thank him enough. That's the kind of exclusives that you get here on the block party. But what a guy, man. How can you not fall in love with him? We're in London. We've got a largely British crowd out here watching the show. A lot of people at home, I'm sure, are rooting for Tom Aspinall and stuff like that. But how can you not be a Curtis Blades fan now, man? You know, you don't have to be a trash talker to be a superstar in this sport. And that guy, well, he's, he said it himself. You've got four there in a shootout, which will ultimately lead to a final end of the year, start a new year, which will give us the next heavyweight contender in the UFC division. And, and personality-wise, every okay. single one of them are stand-up guys. Yes. And we've been, listen, we've been lucky enough to spend a bit of time with Ty. Everybody sees Ty to a shoey man. Uh, you know what not, he's all about. Not in about. these shoes, yeah. but I'll drop the shoey, yeah. But he's a top, top guy. Cyril Gann, stellar human Diamond. being. Obviously, you know what we think of Tom, top guy. And obviously, speaking to Curtis, he's been lucky enough to do that a couple of times. He's just so calm, mild-mannered. Just normal blokes with extraordinary talents that are... And 250-pound, <laughs> six-foot-five frames. <laughs> with four-ounce gloves on, man. <laughs> Listen... There's going to be an earthquake in some way, <laughs> shape or form uh, on Saturday night at UFC London. Uh, and as a final reminder, you can actually be there because we're giving you the opportunity to burn some block and be with us in the arena uh, come Saturday night where Curtis will obviously be one half of that main event against uh, Tom Aspinall. There you can uh, see on screen right now, if you're burning your block, you get the opportunity to enter the competition to win a couple of floor, seat, uh, floor side tickets uh, for UFC London. Um, you can see that there's a... A brand spanking new Yulia tracksuit there, courtesy of the Block Acid Boys. You can yeah. actually pretend that you work here. Is that that's, me? That that's looks like my under. back now. That's, that, that's either me or Tilt posing with that tracksuit top on there. As you can see, the combat matrix has been paying off at Pete HQ. Looking lean there, aren't I? I'm looking good. You've just compared yourself, physique-wise, to the gorilla. To the gorilla there until. That's yeah, it. He's not that's here, up. that's why. That's over, man. Um, and the final prize there, as you can see, a training session with that man that he's just mentioned, Darren Till and Hamza Chimaev. Stockholm, the destination for that. So if you fancy it, you, you want to know what it's like to compete with these two clowns, um, you are more than welcome to burn some block, enter that competition, and you'll find out in the next 24 hours, 36 hours, uh, whether you are obviously uh, that competition winner. Uh, have I missed anything on the show? Well, what you have missed is that this is our last show for the temporary time, buddy. This is it, unfortunately. Block party tonight comes to an end, hence the scene, hence the party, no, no, hence got, the live you, event. You've got to call it a season finale. Season finale, what did I say? A finale. Sorry, a se this is the season yes. finale. So this is season one, episode 12. This is it. Now you're going to have a little break over summer. Yep. And we'll be back with season two in September. And a whole new raft of guests. Yeah, and listen, there's a lot going to go on in August, as we know. We've got um, a block acid athlete competing for a world title in the UFC in Leon Ed Edwards. We wish him all the very best with that against Kamaru Usman. Uh, we've also got Anthony Joshua taking on another block athlete, athlete in Alexander Usyk. It's happening on the Blooming Center world night. Champions left, right, that's also happening in, in August. There's various other little bits and bats as well uh, that are going to be taking place in August. So we will be back for a full review at the start of September and we'll be gearing towards that super fight between Canelo and Triple G, which will be absolutely ridiculous. Look at that as well. 8,900 block burned during the show. A little oh, over good. an hour. There you go. Unreal, man. There you go. And that'll keep running. That'll keep running. You can keep burning that block. Over the next 24 hours, you will find out uh, whether you have won one of those three prizes. But the most important message that we could throw your way tonight is that you don't need the QR codes anymore. You don't need any uh, wallet that we've created. That new platform is up and it is live for you. Uh, Blaze.blockasset.com. Co at the moment, just for block tokens. But next week, even though I won't be here, or we won't be here, to remind you on the show, Rusty will be here. Check out Rusty's That's podcast. A good idea, actually, yeah. Rusty's Wednesday That's night it. podcast. Rusty, Rusty can pick up the slack. He can hey, pick up Rusty. Up. Rusty can time pick up. He did some heavy That's lifting. It. Next five weeks, Rusty will do all our graph for us, and yeah. we'll come back like a blaze of glory for season Tanned. two. <laughs> that's it that's how we'll do it we're going club Tropicana next month you so, better believe it so if you've got uh, any asset tokens that you need uh, to burn next week there'll be more information uh, on that just a quick reminder join the discord it's a bit of crack if you like talking about sports if you like talking about crypto if you like talking about NFTs that's the place to be there's also uh, the discord podcast that goes out every single Wednesday that was yesterday uh, but every single Wednesday is when the Discord podcast with Rusty uh, is up and running for you. And we encourage you to follow us all on all different platforms. So whether that be the YouTube here, make sure you subscribe, uh, or whether it's on any of the uh, social media followings, block at it, uh, 
Core. Make sure you click on Twitter, click on Instagram, and you'll never miss out on any of our content. Listen, thank you very much. Last 12 weeks have been an absolute blast. If you look at the guest list that we've had over the last 12 weeks, Unreal. it's been absolutely sensational. Highlights? Who's your, who's your highlight? Uh, being in Ibiza talking to Jorge Masvidal, of course, standard. Uh, Alexander Usyk. Charles Oliver, do you want me to name every single guest? Because every single one was an absolute banger, man. <laughs> they were Special all. Special thank amazing. you to my mate Trent, my good mate. Obviously, we'll get Trent back on next season when. Uh, no, we'll get him back on for when your crowd go and try and win the World Cup. We'll get Trent back on for that for a bit of a giggle. Yeah, listen, well done to all the team here at Block Asset that have managed to pull this show together uh, on a week by week basis. And a little bit of a special mention to little Mike. Who puts this sh- Norman all the, Price? All the little graphics and yeah. all the little screen grabs and all that type of stuff. He looks like Norman Price from Fireman Sam. But I'd say you summer, he knows how to bloody run a TV show. So well done uh, to our boy Mike. Uh, we'll all be back in around about five weeks. So enjoy your summer, enjoy the sport, enjoy the chats in the, in the Discord, uh, and we will catch you very very soon for season two. <laughs>